looking at a sketch of a Nyquist plot from a transfer function. Again, we use the Nyquist plot to see how a curve in the s-plane turns out to look in the f of s-plane. So we're going to use some generic variable names here, tau1, tau2, and k. I don't have actual values for these, but I want to show you what the shape will look like for a second order function like this with non-zero values for t1 and t2 and k greater than zero. So first we're going to draw gamma sub s and in order to do that I'm going to set up some graph paper here. Okay, so in order to do that we'll go ahead and draw our axes, the real axis and the j omega axis. And now we're going to draw the two poles so we're assuming that in this case tau 1 is uh, greater than tau 2 so it's going to be one, minus 1 over tau 1 will be smaller than minus 1 over tau 2 closer to the origin and we'll go ahead and draw the shape gamma sub s so again gamma sub s has a radius of infinity as we go from plus j omega to minus j omega plus j infinity to minus j infinity and the next phase is now we're going to draw or actually we're going to sketch gamma of GOL or gamma of L, the open loop transfer function's impression of this same contour in the f of s plane. So if we were to label a couple of points A, B, C, D, E here, we're going to look at how those points turn out in the f of s plane. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a couple of these points by just sketching their values. So for omega equals a, the gain g of j omega, if we add a equal to zero, because remember a here is at the origin. And so k over zero plus one times zero plus one is just k. So g o l of j times zero is k and the angle is also zero. So that was easy. Now let's choose some point B. So we don't know exactly what the value of B is here. And that's because we don't have a transfer function with actual values. But you can imagine that we're going to move B sort of maybe starting close to the origin. We're going to pick a B here, then we're going to pick a B here, and here and we'll pick what I have labeled as B, and we'll continue it on until we approach the point C, where C is J infinity. So we'll label a couple of these B points here. B1, for example, might be here. B2 would be here. B3 would be here, etc. So some point B3 is going to be the point where we cross the J omega axis. And then we'll label a couple more B points as well, B3, B4, B5, until we finally reach the origin. So when we reach the origin, we now have enough information to draw the shape of our contour as we've moved from here all the way up to here. So we've taken our little square, and we've moved this square up on the contour until we've reached J infinity. And in doing that, because g of j infinity is equal to zero, because k over infinity times infinity is zero, phase of zero. So we're ending up at the origin here. So again, now we keep a radius of infinity, and we go down until we get to j minus infinity, and now we take that box and we move it back up to the origin. So we're going to start at the origin, and we'll be able to use symmetry to draw exactly the same shape back. So now that we've done this and we've indicated the direction, again we've done this through symmetry. So now we know that for any value k greater than zero, again we, we sort of sketched this out and I told you what some of the values are, but for any k greater than zero, our contour gamma gol does not circle s equals minus 1. That's because we sort of approach in this direction the origin. We don't go all the way up to the real axis and then approach the origin. So there's no way that we're going to actually circle the point s equals minus 1. 
So that tells us that this transfer function will be stable for all values of k greater than 0. And that's something that we also knew from the root locus. For this transfer function, we're going to have poles that are going to be left of the j-omega axis. So any value of k we pick is going to result in a stable system.